you can't why, sell why it would somebody why would somebody even buy the sec, just the second lien so <laughs> like, second lien holders are a little bit of a different it's a it's a different spin on the same thing that we're talking about they have all kinds of reasons Dave go ahead I don't let's, do seconds you, let's say you have a, a lot of loans were created with piggyback right 80 20 loans right you have a hundred thousand dollar property you we can use a million dollar property whatever the first one's like a 60 the other one's a 20 right 20 grand total 80 grand so now you have up to 80 grand, a hundred thousand dollar property. You have LTV at 80%, which is not the best, but it's fair. Now I can go and buy that second lien for 20 grand or I can buy it for 10 grand, say, right? And I can mm. start receiving payments on that second. I'm, right. less, I'm not as secure as the first, right? I can get, we won't get into all that stuff, but I can buy it. But the problem is if that property drops in value, my second lien gets squeezed with equity. But that's a, that's a, that'd be in a in a, se, in a second lien smaller in a, in a smaller second lien against the house yes. versus yeah. a wraparound mortgage. Right. So in a wrap so in a wraparound around, situation, we need to pay be, off the first lien. Yes, because you say you have a you know hundred thousand dollar second right and a forty forty thousand dollar first technically right and the property's only worth say ninety, you're up to one hundred forty. Yeah. We, need you to pay off that first for me to get in a possession. Right. Okay. Right. That's, 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 I guess that's where I got lost. Cause I was, yep. I was like, wait a minute in a rap situation, you got to pay off the first. Yeah. We so were getting a lot of questions in the chat. I, I appreciate you guys. Uh, so <laughs> again, we're in the numbers. If I sit there and bought, if you, if you bought a 72 loan and you bought it for 40 grand, whatever the situation is, and the balance of that first lien is 40 grand. You then create a new note, say for, you know, 80 grand, whatever, hundred grand. I can come in and buy that hundred thousand dollar note for a discount, say 70,000, 75,000. You then would pay off the first for 40 grand. You would collect 35 in your pocket. We then our lien because the fact that the other one's gone moves up to first position. And now we're in first position of your new created note. So, so would you would you buy that? Would you buy that as if it was a first position lien, or would you still yet, buy it with the second position discount? I would definitely price it that way. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The okay. risk level is less there because it's a first lien. It will and be a first lien. Yeah. Okay. Right. We'd have that understanding that the first is going to get paid off, so that would put us into first position. Yes. And Melissa, did you have a question on that too? Well, I had a question based off of the fact that let's say. Uh, like Justin said, we have a deal that has no equity, but then we created money with it. Um, mm -hmm. We owner financed it. Let's say, you know, the house is worth 100000 and we sold it for 140000 right? Mm -hmm. You say you buy those. How do you buy those since you're not buying against the LTV, apparently? We're basically buying based on returns. Right. Right. We're going to look at LTV as a factor. But we want to look the fact that we're buying a bond initially, right? It's a bond with maturity date. And most of the time, bonds are calculated by yield. So we're going to say, what would our annual return be on this situation? We're going to buy it based on that annual return. 10%, 12%, 8%, whatever the number is. Nice. And people calculate different things differently. So that's one of the factors is making sure your interest rate is a pretty good high number. Because the lower the interest rate, the lower my discount has to be. Or more money right. discount, but, right? So if you're creating notes at twelve percent, you're doing much better than someone creating eight percent. Right. <clears throat> gotcha. So and going back to your thing with the equity, um, you know, if it's a hundred and forty thousand dollar note and the house is only worth a hundred, we're probably going to price that on the value of the house in that situation because because technically it's underwater uh, according to to yes. present value of the property. So we're, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to play the game where we think that the price is going to go up on the, the value is going to go up on the house. I, and th I'm not saying that's a bad game to play. That's just not our game. We're going to do it on today's values, today's unpaid principal balance, today's property value, whatever it is right now. Does that make sense? Uh, no, because, <laughs> because if, if you're saying that you can sell a note that um, does not have any equity in it, so can you or can't you? Yes, you can, okay. but the pricing is going to be based on the lower of the two. 
if, if the property value is lower than the unpaid balance, we're going to do the pricing based on the property value and vice versa. And, and what, what would that pricing look like? It depends on the state. Step two. <laughs> yeah, it, there's a lot of questions go into that. Um, sorry, someone asked how to ask questions in the chat. Feel free to put it in the chat. We'll definitely answer as we can. Um, so pricing based on state for us, and we always price the fact that it may go non-performing. So that means I may have to foreclose on it. And different states have different regulations and rules and pricing on foreclosures. Where Texas is awesome, Missouri is great, go up to Chicago, you're having more problems, right? Northeast is just yeah. disastrous, California. Some of these states out here have a long foreclosure process, which means that I'm gonna have to hold that property and tax and everything else longer. So my, my return is gonna be less. I also have debt license to worry about. So there's different things that go into the note side of buying things. And if you're looking to learn about the note side, um, feel free to reach out to us. We run a class on stuff about this stuff for note buyers. But you guys as sellers, you guys have to know the fact that every asset's a little bit different based on price of value of the house. If this is a $40,000 house or a $150,000 property, that changes my pricing. Yeah. Right? Interest rate changes my pricing. Yeah. Interest rate is a big deal. Uh, which state it's in is a big deal. So. Seasoning plays a part. Uh, down payment to some extent, like Dave yep. says, but loan to value. So all those things kind of go in. And we've got a list of those kind of things. Yes, yeah, we're, we're getting to it stuff, right? Yeah. So and one of the things we want to make sure you guys know is that there's a thing called a legal balance too. I, I recently ran to a seller finance person that was going to sell me a note. And they said, here's the UPB. And we're trying to figure out how they came up with the unpaid balance currently. And what they did is included like property taxes they paid up. Well, what you have to find out is that that's a separate dollar amount, separate from the unpaid balance. The right. unpaid balance fill, follows the amortization schedule, like a T, and anything extra, insurances, taxes, anything corporate advances is part of a legal balance. When you collect legal balance, you can make an arrangement with the borrower, or if it goes foreclosure, I can add it to my balance at the auction. Mm -hmm. So make sure you have the unpaid balance there. So, so and then the unpaid balance... Uh, that's, and Melissa, I wouldn't, I don't want to pick on you, but I just, I just to point it out, that's the problem with apartments.com is that it doesn't calculate principal and interest. All it's tracking is monthly payment, which is good. And we, we definitely want to know that number, but we also, because we have an amortization schedule to follow, we need to know how much principal and how much interest is being paid every month, which is where a servicer comes in. So we're going to get, let me, let me jump one thing before we get there. Yeah. Just yeah, know yeah. the fact that please don't give us PITI for those who don't know principal interest tax insurance. All we care about is principal and interest. Why? Tax insurances are something we don't receive as no buyers. I'm sure like you guys, we don't receive it. You guys may, and then it gets paid out, right? Our servicer typically does an escrow and then pays that money out. So we don't see that. All we care about is that principal interest, which does not change no matter what happens with taxes or the, the, the insurance part. Right. So all these kind of deals of numbers and making sure that you don't receive part payment or you pay, they receive more and to make sure it applies correctly. Using different services are great. There are software out there to manage these things, right? However, like landlording, we have things called note servicers. Note servicers will reach out to the borrower. They'll send monthly statements to the borrower. They'll resolve issues with the borrower. They'll, if there's a defaulted loan, they'll reach out and try to negotiate with them. Try to save mods. There are property manager in the note world. What they also do is provide a system of tracking the payments. Unlike apartments.com where it's a rental system, servicer is actually meant for notes. They'll actually have a system where it shows you your payments and what they call a the next due date. Like an amortization schedule, if they don't pay for three months, the next due date doesn't move until the next payment's made. So if they haven't paid in two years, the next payment gets applied two years prior, okay? We're rental partners.com. If I say, give me a payment history, you guys will show me a payment history, but I don't know which one that applies to. Mm -hmm. And there ends the problem, especially mm -hmm. if we get to foreclose on it. 
And that's the thing. All of all of that information is important for us in for our worst case scenario, for which is for us is foreclosure. So we have to have all that information has to be accurate and correct and up to date so that we can give it to the attorney so they can do the foreclosure. So that's that's a main focus for us as far as why it's important to track those payments the way that we'd like them to be tracked. Um, and not even that we like, but we need them to be tracked that way yeah. so that we can prepare. If for the loan goes into bankruptcy, they're yeah. going to want to see that bankruptcy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If it goes to foreclosure, prove the actual balance of the loan. How do you prove it? Right. With payments are all over the place and stuff like that. Um, so one thing when we ask for our numbers, which we'll share and we'll, we'll share your link to a, a form we can give you, they'll email you over the whole list of items, um, is we want to know them that you can go to a servicer and get the dashboards. We have SoHow on here. You can explain a little bit if you have questions where you can literally take a picture of the dashboard and it'll tell you all the numbers that we would ask for, right? We'll also provide you monthly statements notes from the, 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 the borrower. So if they reach out to the borrower, all those notes are there. So the interactions and all of us note buyers wouldn't want, want that information because it helps us know what the life of the loan is going on. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got a question. question we've had too is how much are note services? Yeah. Well, so hell. what we don't ever get involved with because most of our loans are bank originated is you guys can put these in the note agreement. So you if can have the borrower this, pay for it, the renter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If that borrower pays for it, guess what? Our price will actually be higher. Because mm -hmm. we don't got to net that out. Pretty so, so pretty significantly easy. higher too, I believe, yes. right? I mean, yep. it, it's a pretty it's a pretty hefty um, increase. I know when Dave and I talked about that note I had for yes. sale. Um, I mean, it increased the 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 value of the note by like three or four thousand dollars. It was yes. like, oh wow. Because yeah. I, for the next 10 years, I'm not paying a, a, a servicing fee. I'm collecting right. a whole P and I amount. Right. Right. I mean look, luckily for me and we were we were kind of taught to when we use our servicer to put that in the agreement that the, the servicer pays or the borrower pays the servicer. And that servicing fee can be a significant portion of that of that payment. Uh, sometimes yes, right. sometimes not. It's usually it's a flat fee. So let's have Sohail chime in here. Yeah. Uh, maybe you don't want to get into pricing. I don't know, but uh, which we question? We refer, there he is. <laughs> Let me uh, flip it over here. Oh, sorry, guys. There we go. I flip over my uh, system over here. So, so Sohail, welcome. Um, I appreciate you being part of it. Um, I do want to ask you a question about this pricing thing. We would like to know from you, how much does it cost for a note originator to charge to, for the fee for a monthly servicing for a performing note with HomeKey? So with us, with HomeKey, um, we have an all-inclusive monthly fee, which is $35. Um, that includes managing collecting the payment managing the escrows taking care of the tax statements at the end of the year if there is an underlying lien that you need us to manage for you we will also do that at the same price there's no additional cost um it's 35 dollars flat fee we do charge a hundred dollar setup fee which goes to our service provider for tax certifications and things like that but 35 dollars is all we charge and there are servicers out there who may charge a little bit less, who may charge a little bit more, but then it's not an all-inclusive fee. They, they tend to be more a la carte. The more services you use, the more you pay, the less fewer services you use, the amount is a little bit less. In our case, it's all-inclusive. Yeah. So um, we did have a question real quick about what information we need, no buyers to buy. Um, I put in the chat a link for a form, fill it out, and you'll get an email with all the data points we're going to get into in a few minutes, what information we need as note buyers from you guys. Cool. 